Are you looking for the best way to start and scale a YouTube channel this year, but you are overwhelmed by the sheer amount of outdated tips that are circulating the internet? If you want to optimize your channel for success, you need to make sure you're staying up to date with the latest and most effective strategies. So today I'm going to share the top 10 outdated YouTube tips that you need to stop doing so that you can scale your channel the right way and make the impact that you've been dreaming of. What's up, it's Sandy, your guide to authentic video. If you haven't yet, grabbed my starting on YouTube cheat sheet and let's dive in. The first outdated YouTube tip that you need to stop doing this year is writing all your own descriptions and scripts on your own. We are in a new era. It is time to start using AI to help make our lives easier. If you don't use AI in your business right now, I'm about to save you loads of time and level you up. Like, shoot, I'm so excited. I asked on my Instagram stories, what AI writing tool do people most like to use? And I heard a lot of chat GPT. And so I checked that out. Look what you can do in chat GPT. I can go in and type, give me 10 topics to make videos about growing a YouTube channel, and it will give me 10 amazing topic ideas. You can even ask it to write you hooks and descriptions, like why someone should start a YouTube channel this year, and it will write one out for you. How wild is that? Canva also has an AI tool called Magic Write. If you create a document, you can click Magic Write, and it can give you tips, it can give you hooks. There's so many ways that you can be using AI. Now, by far, my favorite AI tool to use is called Hypotenuse AI. I think that's how you say it. You can click on marketing copy and you can scroll down and you'll see there's actually a section for YouTube titles and descriptions. Now, unfortunately, this is the only option that's not free, but look what you can do in it. You can put the video topic, you can add in keywords and your voice, and then you can pick the tone that you want the title and description to have, which I think is so cool. And then it will generate multiple options for you to use. Now, if I go to marketing copy again, there's actually a section that helps you write video hooks and introductions. And guess what? I used this to help me write my hook for this video. What? I always recommend to make it your own then to take what AI gives you and then add in your own voice. And for me, while you can have AI like give you lists of tips, I recommend usually using tips that you can think of on your own. That's gonna make your channel more unique to you. But if you need some ideas, let AI help you out. The next outdated YouTube tip that you need to stop doing this year is one minute intros. Now your introductions are more important than ever and they need to be under 30 seconds if possible. It's time to cut out all the fluff of our intros. You may notice I no longer do mini intros that look like this. Cut it out ain't worth it. I also don't ask people to subscribe in the beginning of my videos because if people like your stuff, they're gonna subscribe anyway. You need to have a really clear and strong hook that pulls people in and then gets your main point as quickly as possible. Now you may notice when you're on YouTube and you hover over a video, it's automatically gonna start playing. So it's super important that you have a strong hook that's gonna entice someone to then click into that video. I think it's also important to double check the captions on your video because often those videos play on silent with captions. So you wanna make sure that the text YouTube adds to it is correct and you can go in and make sure you edit that. Also because intros now need to be shorter than ever, it's important that you don't talk too much about yourself. Try and like, sneakily or not sneakily but creatively weave in what you do with a point that you're making to establish your credibility without making it a sentence on its own so instead of me saying what's up it's danny i'm a youtube coach and channel manager i can say as a youtube coach and channel manager these are the mistakes i see and i know that if you avoid these it's going to be helpful for you so see how i turned it around and made it all about my audience instead of me you still want to establish credibility in your intros but you still need to do it in a way that's a hook for your video that's enticing people to watch. Remember, the more you can say you in your intro, the better because it's pulling in your audience. Going along with this, the next outdated YouTube tip to stop doing this year is long outros or honestly just like outros altogether. I tell my clients, no more recapping at the end of your videos. If you have chapters in your videos, your audience can kind of go through and recap the video themselves. Don't waste time at the end with a recap. Many people will dip out by the end of your video anyway. And on YouTube, it's really important that we have high audience retention, which means people are watching a good amount of your video. So if we know people are more likely to dip out near the end of the video, we wanna make the outro short so people dip out less, right? I keep my outros so fast now, I say the same thing every time. If this video is helpful for you, it's so helpful for me. If you can give it a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe and while you wait for next week's video, check out this video.
and I reference a video that would relate to that video and I'll see you next time. And then you could do some weird dance moves and then the video is over. The next outdated YouTube tip to stop doing this year is posting to your community tab just once a week. In order to gain access to the community tab, you need to have 500 subscribers, but if you have less than that, no worries. You can also get it through enabling access to advanced features on your channel. And you can read through here to learn how to do that. Now, once you have the community tab, it's important that you treat it very similar to your Instagram stories. You wanna share more about your life and the behind the scenes of your videos in the community tab. You can do polls, you can post pictures, you can post your offers. It's a really nice place for your community to get to know you better. And I just see so many creators not taking full advantage of it. And I know myself when I see my favorite creators posting in their community tab, pictures of their family or on some random outing. I love it and it makes me feel closer to them. And for me personally, I'm trying to post at least three times a week to my community tab. And I try and make two of those something more personal about my life. I'd like to quickly show you some tips and tricks to posting in the community tab that you may not know. So when you go into the community tab, you have options to either upload an image. You can upload up to five if you want to do it sort of carousel. You can also do an image poll, a text poll, and add in a video. You can also share one of your latest YouTube videos in a post like this by simply going to your video hitting share and then clicking create a post and then you can add a caption and that will add to your community tab. I think the most powerful feature of the community tab is image polls. This is a great way to actually get input from your community on what they want from you and people love to fill out polls because then they get to see what other people voted on. So I'm going to show you how I would go about doing this. I'm going to hit image poll and I'm going to ask my community for help on picking my next video. I'm going to put shorts or regular videos. Oop, 14 characters, perfect. And then you wanna make sure that these images are squares. I'll head to Canva, click create a design and make sure the design is Instagram post or square sized. Now I've actually already created my images, so all I need to do is download them and then I will upload them to my poll. I'll click here, add in my square picture of shorts and add in my picture of regular videos. And then what's so cool is I can also go here and I can schedule out the post if I don't want to post it immediately. So you could schedule out your community posts for the next couple weeks or even months, which is really neat. The next outdated YouTube tip to stop doing this year is using hashtag shorts in your shorts title. That's it, that's the thing to stop doing. I see a lot of people still doing that. You don't need to do that anymore. You don't even need to do hashtag shorts in the description. If a video is under 60 seconds, YouTube is automatically going to make it into a short, so you don't need to worry about that. Also, if you are wanting to level up your shorts this year, be sure to watch my behind the scenes, step-by-step -step YouTube shorts tutorial. The next outdated YouTube tip to stop doing this year is writing short YouTube titles. I see a lot of creators recommend to have titles that are around like 50 to 70 characters. And to that I say, you got 100 characters, use them. Keywords are still key for small YouTubers. It's what's gonna allow you to show up in YouTube search for your audience. Yes, you want some videos to be pushed out that are suggested by YouTube, that's amazing, but that's not gonna be the reality for most of your videos. If we look at my channel analytics from the last year, we can see for my videos that the majority of my views, or 47.1%, came from YouTube search. The next, is browse features at a 27.8%. So YouTube search is still so key for my channel. In terms of shorts, I'm really surprised as well that actually 44.3% also is coming from YouTube search. My shorts show up more from search than even the shorts feed, which I think is amazing and should be the goal of your shorts as well. Remember, when videos show up in search, they're able to last a lot longer in YouTube's algorithm. They aren't just trending videos that'll go away in a few weeks. The reason that my videos show up in YouTube search is because I take the time to write strong titles and strong descriptions. Keywords are what landed me an interview with BBC for something that I wasn't crazy well versed on but I had the video with the keywords in it so I showed up and searched I got offered the chance to be in the interview I said yes the last part of this title with digital nomad life in it is what landed me that interview 
keywords are amazing. Now, if you're asking Danny, how do I write really good titles? I recommend using this plugin called TubeBuddy. You can use the link in my description box to try it out for free and then use the code Danny's Buddy to get 20% off. I use it and all my clients use it to write really strong titles. I go to their keyword explorer tab and I will go in and I will type in different keywords of titles that I wanna use. Let's say I wanna make a 15 minute yoga for moms workout. If I type in the title or idea I have, it's going to give you a weighted score and an unweighted. Unweighted is just a general score for how it thinks you could do based on search volume and competition, and weighted is then specific to your channel. You can look at what the average views are, and also you can look at what the lowest view count is, and then compare that to the average of your channel's views. So it's really helpful in understanding if you're gonna be able to show up in a specific topic. The next outdated YouTube tip to stop doing this year is filming all your videos in one location especially educational videos this is something i'm still really bad at but if you can take the time to kind of move around in your educational videos like film here film there take people out like outside with you people love vlog style videos now especially i think because of tiktok and you can make your videos more engaging by moving around to different locations you could even like change what you're wearing i'm currently using the sony zv1 but my favorite camera to vlog that has great audio is a dji pocket 2 all my vlogs are shot with that, and you could even shoot educational videos with it. My favorite example of a YouTuber who does this so well is Katie Steckley. She has awesome videos, and she really makes her educational content engaging by moving around in different locations. Here she's talking and making a drink. Here she's in a different location in her house, and then even again here in a different spot. And so it just allows her videos to be that much more engaging and fun to watch and listen to. The seventh outdated YouTube tip to stop doing this year is using the word guys. Hey guys, what's going on guys? This is my pet peeve. If you are a part of this community, you know, but there is only one person usually on the other end of a phone or a computer. So treat it as such. YouTube is a one-way conversation that you're having with your ideal viewer. So say the word you, make it personal. I don't know if people actually give the advice of saying guys, but so many people do it that I just had to address it because it hurts my soul every time I hear it a little bit. Okay, so start saying you. Thank you. The ninth outdated YouTube tip to stop doing this year is creating high quantities of videos. Remember, quality is always way more important than quantity. I used to tell my clients, if you could just put out four YouTube videos a month, that was amazing and enough to scale. Now, I actually tell my clients, can you just get out two regular YouTube videos a month that are anywhere from five to 12 minutes and then four YouTube shorts, which is a total of six videos and shorts are under 60 seconds. It's super doable. If you can do that, if you can start with that as your minimum, you will scale on YouTube. And it's something that's really sustainable so you can stick with it. And the name of the game on YouTube is consistency. So instead of putting out 30 shorts a month, take the extra time to script out really high value videos. When you create content on YouTube, you should be thinking this video could potentially show up in YouTube search engine for five years. So I wanna take the time to make sure that it's really high value and serves my business well. The 10th outdated YouTube tip to stop doing this year is call to actions that ask people questions about your video. What? We all know call to actions, which call your audience to do something or engage with you in some way are super important in increasing engagement of your videos. But let me tell you, as someone who's been on YouTube for four years, people almost always do not do <laughs> what you ask them to do. They don't usually subscribe. They don't usually comment when you ask them things directly related to your video. But what people do love to do is give their opinion. The most engagement I've ever gotten on a call to action in one of my videos is when I ask people if a pleather jacket I was wearing was working for me or not because I was genuinely feeling a little unsure if it was too much or not. And I think my community saw that and they wanted to boost me up a little. And so I had so many people letting me know that the pleather jacket was okay and looking good. So take the time when you're scripting in call to actions in your videos to make them fun and relatable. And if they can get your audience to give an opinion, you're gonna greatly increase the odds that people are actually going to comment on your videos. To prove this point, I would love for you to rate this picture of Manny on a scale of one to 10. And your opinion, what are you thinking about it? And if you could actually comment to prove my point, that would be amazing. I would appreciate you forever. And if not, like, no judgment, it's fine. Remember, you have got this. Everyone has something valuable to share on YouTube. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Play the long game. You're making big moves this year. 
we got this. If this video is helpful for you, it's so helpful for me. If you can give it a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe. And while I wait for next week's video, check out this video on scaling with YouTube shorts. And I'll see you next time. Oh, say goodbye. Say goodbye. Everybody's going to rate a photo of you and they're going to tell you, they're going to be like, oh, it's a 20 out of 10. You're so cute. Oh, yes. So cute and fluffy. I love you so much. <sighs>